Welcome to the ADF Insider Essentials channel for another relaxing swim in the application module pool. My name is Chris Muir, I'm a product manager for Oracle's development tools section. This is the fourth in a series of videos to explore the application module pool in ADF business components. In today's episode, we're going to explore what settings can be used to keep our pool clean. An interesting question arises from our previous application module pool episodes. If the application module pool supports the concept of a recycle threshold, where any session requests above the recycle threshold result in a previous session's reference AM being passivated to the database, the AM resets, then used for a new session request, why do we bother to have a parameter like JBO AM pool max pool size? If every time we hit the threshold, we simply make use of an existing referenced AM by moving its state to the database and reusing that AM, surely we can never hit the max pool size. For a system under light load, this is true. But for a system that is under heavy load, it's possible when a new session request comes in that all of the application modules in the pool below the recycle threshold are currently marked as unavailable. Now remember that an application module that is marked unavailable is when it is being checked out by an existing session request and a thread is working on that request and the application module. And therefore it would be very undesirable to upset that request and its processing of the application module by passivating the AM during that processing. That's why the unavailable checkout process exists to protect the application module. So while the system is under heavy load, lots of requests being received by separate sessions and all the application modules under the threshold are currently unavailable as they are being processed. Essentially, there is no available or referenced AMs that can be passivated out to reuse their AMs. What does the AM pool do in this case? What the pool does is it instantiates an application module above the threshold, such that our total number of application modules exceeds the threshold number. It does this to allow the pool to accommodate the additional session requests without the ability to passivate another application module. In some ways, you can think of this as a last resort. The system is very busy serving existing requests. In fact, so busy that all the AMs are currently being processed and we've hit our magical threshold number. The pool at this point could just reject the new session request, but rather it gives us some more wiggle room by creating a spare application module to work with. So this identifies why the max pool size parameter exists, as it allows us to, under heavy load, we can start approaching, approaching the max pool size over and above the threshold. But interestingly, it will keep on instantiating AMs for any additional server requests while all the other application modules are busy. This will continue until our JBO AM pool max pool size is reached, and then finally the pool will reject any new requests. Or you simply run out of memory as your JBO AM pool max pool size and the total rem requirements of all your application modules and all of their EOs and BOs exceeds your Java heap size. Or, finally one of those busy application modules is checked back into the pool, marked as referenced or available, making it a candidate for reuse by the server to use for another session request. Or, finally, a user ends their session resulting in the application module being made available in the pool, or they time out with the same result. Potentially a way to summarize this and to reinforce it in your mind is in the following pseudocode. If all the AMs up to the threshold are currently unavailable, then what the pool will do is allocate an application module above the threshold. It will instantiate a new one. Otherwise, else, we passivate an existing application module and use the space below the recycle threshold. Now, we do hit a problem with the new found elasticity in the number of application modules we can have in the pool. Imagine we have grown beyond the recycle threshold and our application is now consuming more memory, legitimately so, to serve all those sessions we have. Yet eventually those sessions and the load will decrease 
and we'll end up in the predicament of having more available status application modules than we actually designed the system to have. So what happens? Surely we don't need to bounce the application and or the server to get that memory back. Does the application module pool have a mechanism to clean the pool of these unnecessary, I guess, idle set of application modules? As we discussed in earlier episodes, there are essentially five parameters that deal with the size of the pool and how to clean up the application modules. Let's go into these in detail. The first parameter to discuss is the jbo.ampool.monitor sleep interval parameter that you can see from the application module configuration dialog. This parameter, commonly known as the pool polling interval, set to 600,000 milliseconds or essentially 600 seconds by default. It defines how often a cleanup thread sweeps the entire pool looking for application modules to reclaim, essentially dropping them from the pool so the memory can be reclaimed, the garbage collector can clean up the memory that's no longer used and the overall pool can shrink. But I can imagine this raises two questions. How many application modules does the sweep monitor reclaim? And secondly, how does the pool decide an application module is a candidate to be reclaimed? Essentially, these two questions are answered by two parameters apiece. The parameters JBO AM pool min available size and max available size are designed to shrink the pool to different levels depending on the system being under heavy or light load. In addition, in terms of which AMs to reclaim, the pool uses two strategies, which involve the JBO AM pool max inactive age and JBO AM pool time to live parameters. Let's first consider the JBO AM pool min available size and max available size parameters in more detail to see what they do. In shrinking the pool, the system upon a monitor sweep the pool just could eliminate all idle application modules. That is every available application module in the pool. But if you think about it, this is not really that desirable for all the reasons we described, like when we were discussing the JBO AM pool in a pool size parameter in earlier episodes. As there is a small performance cost associated with instantiating application modules, we could find ourselves in a position where everything goes quiet, we sweep all the available or idle application modules away, and then suddenly we receive new session requests and there are no available application modules primed ready to use. As a result, there will be a small associated cost of instantiating new application modules to service these new requests. So this strategy is not very optimal. Is there a better strategy? Can it be improved? It can, and this is where the JBO AM pool min available size and max available size parameters come into play. Before investigating these pool cleaning parameters, there's one thing we need to learn about first. That is, when the system considers itself under heavy load and when it considers itself under light load. Depending on heavy or light load, the system chooses between the JBOAM pool min available size or max available size parameters in sweeping the pool. A system is said to be under heavy load, as we described before, when the number of application modules marked as unavailable, that is, the application modules that are currently checked out of the pool, is greater than the JBO recycle threshold. The definition of a system under light load, as opposite, is one where the total number of application modules is less than or equal to the JBO recycle threshold, or there's at least one available or referenced application module. In other words, this implies the system won't have to instantiate any application modules above the recycle threshold, as it is either still has room to grow under the threshold, or there are AMs that can be reused as they are available or reference and therefore they can be passivated. Returning to the pool parameters, this then lets us explain the min available size and the max available size parameters and how they are used. If the system is under light load, then, when the pool monitor comes along and discovers application modules to reclaim, it will reclaim all the idle application modules back to the min available size, essentially the default value of 5. 
Alternatively, if the system is under heavy load, remember this is when we have more unavailable AMs above the recycle threshold. In this case, the pool monitor will reclaim any idle AMs back to an absolute count of 25, which is the default value for max available size. Now this is probably best explained with some examples. Let's talk about those now. So let's consider the first example. Now on the left hand side, we have the default application module pool settings. Let's consider a runtime then. Let's say in the pool at this very moment, we have six available application modules, two reference AMs and one unavailable application module to a total of nine AMs. Now, if we have that many AMs, how many unavailable application modules do we have? Well, we have one. And therefore, the total number of unavailable AMs is under or less than or equal to the JBA recycle threshold. So at this point, the system considers itself to be under light load. Now, if the pool monitor sweep fires at this stage and it can identify any application modules that can be reclaimed, now we haven't talked to what AMs it considers are actually able to be reclaimed at this stage. We'll talk about that in a moment. But if the pool monitor sweep did come along, how small would it potentially sweep the pool to? Or how many application modules would it leave in the pool? What's the absolute minimum? Well, because the min available size is five, that's what it could potentially sweep to. Though it may be any value up to nine, depending on what the statuses of those application modules are. Again, we haven't talked to how the pool decides which AMs are reclaimable. Now let's consider our second example. and this one, we'll talk to the max available size. So again, on the left hand side, we have the default application module pool settings. And then let's say at runtime in that pool, we have three available AMs, 12 referenced AMs and 14 unavailable AMs to a total of 29 application modules. So at the moment, the total num number of unavailable AMs is greater than the JBO recycle threshold. So therefore the system thinks it's under heavy load and it will pay attention to the max available size parameter when sweeping. So when the pool monitor sweep fires, it notices that it has 29 AMs, but it will reclaim a maximum of four AMs. So 29 minus 25, which is the max available size. Now this will bring the pool down to a total minimum of 25 application modules up to a maximum total of 29 application modules. Again, because at this point we haven't defined how the system determines which AMs to sweep. But as you can see here, the, when the system determines it's under light load or heavy load, then the pool monitor makes essentially different decisions on the number of actual AMs that it has to sweep or reclaim. So it pays attention to min available size or max available size as we just discussed. So this explains the use of the min available size and the max available size. I like to think of them as kind of a, a low water mark and a high water mark once you clean the pool. Okay, what the pool will shrink to if you're under a light or heavy load. Now there's a couple of things to note before we leave the discussion of JBO AM pool min available size and JBO AM pool max available size. Firstly, the documentation for JDeveloper versions earlier and including 11.1.1.6.0 had the de definition of these parameters back to front. That is, the min available size is said what the system shrinks the pool to when it's under heavy load, and the max available size is what the system shrinks the pool to when the system is under light load. That doesn't make any sense, and we corrected that in later documentations, uh, documentation sets. Now, Next, arguably having two parameters to control what the pool shrinks to does make the configuration of the pool somewhat overly complicated. You could say the system is over-engineered over in this regards. As such, a recommendation from Oracle is for most customers, not all customers, but most, you can set these parameters to the same value, ignoring this concept of heavy or light load. In doing so, when you set the values, Consider the number of application modules you'd like to keep primed in the pool. And a good suggestion is the number of concurrent users you expect in the system to be hit, plus approximately a 20% buffer. Finally, arguably, 
These parameters and the JBO AM pool in at pool size parameter are all about having available application modules or primed application modules in the pool. So consider coordinating these parameters or these values. Great. So that covers off the question of how the pool decides the number of application modules to shrink to. Now let's answer the question of how the pool monitor determines that an application module is a candidate to be reclaimed in the first place. In doing so, the pool monitor has two strategies driven by two different parameters, JBO AM pool max inactive age and JBO AM pool time to live. The first parameter max inactive age is used for the more normal operation of the pool, while time to live is when something has gone seriously wrong. So let's start with discussing max inactive age, which is the simpler parameter to discuss first. Upon a pool sweep, the pool monitor looks at each application module and determines when the application module was last used. If it's discovered the application module has been idle for longer than JBO AM pool max inactive age, which is 600,000 milliseconds or 600 seconds by default, the application module is a candidate to be cleaned up. To be clear, this is regardless of the application module status. Now in cleaning up the application module, remember the pool will also pay attention to the JBO AM pool min available size and max available size parameters. It will only sweep an AM or clean it up if it determines it needs to actually sweep down to min available size or max available size based on the load. Finally, let's discuss the alternative parameter JBO AM pool time to live. Unlike the JBO AM pool max inactive age parameter, the time to live parameter is much more strict about cleaning up application modules. The time to live parameter doesn't consider the min available size or max available size parameters. If it discovers an application module that has been alive for longer than 3.6 million milliseconds, which is the default value, essentially 60 minutes, it will sweep the application module regardless. So the JBO AM pool time to live parameter is built into ADF business components as a fail safe mechanism for application modules that are stuck for some reason. Practically, this used to be an issue in earlier versions of JDeveloper and ADF back in the 904 days and earlier when ADF BC was known as BC for J. Arguably, this parameter and the associated bugs that inferred it was required back in those earlier releases have been fixed. So Oracle recommends setting this to negative one to turn this pool monitor cleaning strategy off and only turn it on if you're absolutely sure your ADF application is leaking application modules and you can't work out why. So in this swimming lesson in the application module pool, we looked at the scenario of when the pool can grow beyond the recycle threshold. Effectively under heavy demand, the pool can instantiate more application modules to meet that demand. But from there, we also looked at the parameters that act as high level water and low level water marks for how far to shrink the pool under heavy and light loads. Finally, we looked at how the pool or the pool sweeping routine, how often it fires and how it determines which application modules are candidate to be cleaned up. In the next application module pool swimming lesson, we're going to consider the advanced pool setting options. So I will hope you'll join us for another dip in the pool then. Thanks for your time today. Cheerio.